Today we still in the cardiovascular system. Today we mainly talking about the heart and the blood vessel. We say in the cardiovascular system, including the heart, including the blood vessel, and including the blood. So we finish the blood part already. Now we move into the heart and the blood vessel. We talking about the heart first. Heart is our pump. They pushing blood circulation through the blood vessel to all over the body. To the tissues and the cell. So the beating, yeah, beating about 100,000 times every day originally for everybody. We say normally heart beat 60 to 100 per minute. Yeah, per minute. But an hour we have 60 minutes. And we have 24 hours. So pretty close number. Pretty close number. So that's all hard beat or jumping beat. And the heart located in front of the chest area, most part in the left side in the center and the left side. And it cover, it cover by the pericardium. So we say we have cover pericardium. Pericardium is too less in there. So that's the enlarging pericardium here. One cover pretty tight are passing to the superficial of the heart. Another part, let it be away. They have a pretty small space there. And the fill that space is a little bit fluid or liquid in there for liberation because heart jumping will be moving. Let it little be bigger, let it be smaller. And uh, that space is suitable for heart jumping and protection in there. And uh, if we take a pericardium away, we see the heart like this. So we have a, uh, like the heart, we have four chambers and four big blood vessels connected. So chambers we need the looping inside, but blood vessels here we can see aorta. That's the big artery directly connected to the heart. And we also pulmonary vein and the artery connected. So it's not that too clear here. So we see next picture. That's the frontal blood. That's the frontal blood we can see inside of the heart. So we say, when we look inside of heart, we have four chambers. So what means chamber? Chamber just some space. Yeah, just some space. So inside the heart, we have four chambers. Left side and the right side. Blood circulation normally is totally separate. Left side blood not go to right side. Right side blood not go to left side. So our chambers, we, 
may make by their side first. Yeah, left side and the right side. The upper chamber, yeah, upper chamber connected with the terminal V. That we call the R2. So the Chinese is not right here. I should be outside here. Yeah. So R tomb is a thin bond. Yeah, R tomb is a thin bond. Ventricle is a thin thing. Yeah, this outside here. Yeah, English now nothing wrong. Yeah, this Chinese. So upper part is the R tomb. Lower part is the ventricle. And the same thing for right side. Upper part is the artery. Lower part is the ventricle. So totally together, we have four chambers. Four chambers. So that's inside of the heart. Then we can see it connected the blood vessel. Live the ventricle. Yeah, live the ventricle. Directly connected with the aorta. So, like a blood flowing this way. And the right ventricle directly connected with the pulmonary artery. In other words, in other words, ventricle, yeah, ventricle. Connected with the artery. Aorta is the biggest artery. And the uh, artery, yeah, artery connected with the vein. Like if you try to remember, like uh, V connected with A, V connected with V connected with A. So that kind of connection in there. So that's a connection there. And also, like uh, the blood circulation from the artery through the valve go to the ventricle. So that's the blood circulation way. So in the blood circulation, we also have four valves between the artery and the ventricle, and between the ventricle and the artery. So we have four valves. What's the valve's function? Just like a one-way door. So like a blood can pass you through when the door open, but the door will be closed after, in case the blood return back. So that means blood can only circulate go to one direction. They couldn't return back. So that's the valve function. So that's the valve so you can see from this picture. Basically, follow the blood circulation direction. They can go to this direction and they can go to this direction, but couldn't go back. If blood try to go back, the valves will be closed. So that's our heart working way. So then we go to the function part here. So that's the muscles in the heart. So basically muscles in the heart is more fit than 
other organs. We are now to compare with the muscles in the skeletal area, in the arm area. But we compare with the other organs. So that's hard. In different channels, a little bit different. Because each of the chambers, their function is a little bit different. And the pressure there, a little bit different. So that's we say more simple. Blood chambers or hard muscles mostly on the left ventricle part. You can see the difference here. Right ventricle compared with left is more thinner. And the atrium compared with the ventricle is more thinner. That's because of blood pressure, mainly in the aorta part. Is more hard. So if the heart try to pump the blood, go to the aorta, they need more power there. So that's why the muscle, especially in this part, is more thicker. And also they bump the blood circulation to the aorta. Then they will go all over the body. That means great difference here. So that's the main reason why it's a ventricle. Especially, they are getting thicker there. So when we're talking about the heart have four walls, if we're looking from top, Superficially, then the valves look like uh, this. So that's uh, this side is the left side of the patient. This side is the right side of, of the patient. That's the anterior part. That's the posterior part. And we're looking from top of the, like from the high part, looking down, the valves look like this. So these valves on the left side, between left atrium and the left ventricle. So that's we call it a bicapsule valve because they usually have two parts. These valves located on the right side between right side atrium and the ventricle. It's named precapsid valve because they usually have three parts. A little bit different, a little bit different here. And uh, these valves is the uh, aortic valve. It directly open to aorta. Still three parts. And uh, these valves we call pulmonary valves. Still three parts. They open to the pulmonary, pulmonary artery. So that's the valves and the located. Then we're talking about the output of the heart. The output of the heart. So cardiac output, cardiac, cardiac, we say that's basically heart. Medical work for heart. Cardiac output, it means how much value of blood 
injection from the left ventricle or right ventricle, basically the same amount, basically the same amount to the aorta that's coming from left ventricle or to the pulmonary tract or sometimes we call it pulmonary artery, the same name. Per minute, yeah, per minute, how much a month go to there. So that's basically we can calculate. Yeah, basically we can calculate. Cardinary output, yeah, cardinary output. Per minute, how much a month we calculate like each piece how much amount in there, thus we say stroke value, I say. And the times the heartbeat, like a per minute, how many heartbeat in there. So thus we calculate. And the normal, yeah, normal, for adults, for the male person. Struck value originally is 70 millimeter per piece. And we say heart rate originally is about 75 per minute. So that we calculate this way. 70 times 75 per minutes, about 5,000 millimeter or 5 millimeter there. So basically this value pretty much with our whole blood value inside of our body. So that means basically, typically for audios, like a per minute, all of your body's blood will pass in your heart one time. So that's basically number here and how we calculate the number. So that's the heart output. Then we talk about what regular the heart rate. Heart rate is more close relationship with heart output. But it should be regular, not too fast, not too slow. It totally depending how much of our body needing for blood circulation or needing for the like oxygen needed and the blood circulation faster or slow. Like people do exercises, truly they need more oxygen. So your heartbeat will jump in faster. And when people get in rest, when people sleep, they don't need too much oxygen, so heart rate decrease, yeah, decrease. Like everybody when they sleep, their heart rate will be like a bit slow, yeah, like a bit slow. So that's mainly controlled by our nervous system. Our control, we have a control center. So that's located in the medulla of the gut. So when you learn anatomy for nervous system, you know where the medulla of the gut are located. But some students, they may not finish anatomy 
here. So basically that opening and we separate the plane for three parts. So here is the thin part of the plane. The lower part of the thin part connected with the spinal cord. Below is the spinal cord. Right in this area. That's what we call or cardiovascular center. That's truly located in Madula Obadala. That means it control and regulating our heart rate. So that's pretty important. Yeah, that's pretty important. Certainly, it controls still by negative feedback system. That's what we're talking about before. Yeah. Negative feedback system. So we have some receptors can receive like uh, what inside of the blood, like oxygen level. They send the information to brain or high or upper contract center. So not only here, they control in the higher part of our brain. They control cardiovascular center there. So that's basically directly control the output of the heart. Maybe increase or maybe decrease the heart rate by different the situation the body needed. And it directly transfers from nervous impulses by the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. So that kind of balance here. So it control directly by automatically nervous system. So that's what we're talking about before. And also you're talking about in our anatomy class. So that's generally say negative feedback system and the automatically nervous system. They have control center and directly control the heart rate by the body needed. So picture here just show us how it control for the heart. They have input part receive the information and then sending to the brain. And then from the brain part sending down to the control center. We say that's truly located Madula of the data. And then they send you the information by the nervous system directly go to the heart and control the output of the heart rate. So there is a pretty simple picture here. Show us how it controls. If we need more blood circulation, they will increase the risk. If we need more oxygen, if we less needed, if less needed, they will be decreased the risk. So that's basically some control systems in here.
So we say we're still talking about the Madula Obligada. That's a control center in there. And below it is the spinal cord. So that's a some percentage of nerve system or nerve fibers extending from Madula Obligada and then go to spinal cord and then go to outside of the spinal cord in deep in the level and the nerve bunch directly go to our SA node. So that will still belong to your anatomy part. Our heart have a special transmission system. So basically, they will have a SA node the ice nodes basically located in this area. So we have our ice nodes located on the right side of the atrium, the wall of the atrium inside. It is not directly below to the nervous system, but there are functionally pretty similar like our nervous system. They still can send in nervous impulse. And we also have a AV nose. Yeah, basically be we had the blood vessel here. I can put it here. It's not not clear to the behind the blood vessels, but the two they they will be in this area. I just put it in this area. Yeah, I just put it in this area, but uh, but remember they are in the between the wall and the wall of the chambers and the beside atrium and the ventricle. So we have another nose here we call AV nose. So here we call SA nose. Nose just means group of the nervous nervous kind of cells, but not belong to the nervous system. In here, we call AV nodes. So what's these two nodes function here? SA nodes is the page maker, yeah, page maker. Like a how much the heart rate directly depending like uh, the SA nodes make the read there. And then the read is transmission to SA nodes from some fabric go to AV nodes. And the same time go to both side atrium. So that's why they call both side atrium contraction at the same time and pushing the blood go to the ventricle. Same time. And then the impulse go to the AV nodes. From the AV nodes, some fibers go to both sides of the ventricle. And then they cause both sides of the ventricle contraction same time. They will push in the blood, go to the artery, including the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So that's basically how our heart can jump in because we have a special transmission system in there and sending some electrical impulse there. But remember, this system especially belong to heart. It's not belong to our nervous system. It is under nervous system control, but it not belong to nervous system. 
so that some loop uh, your transmission systems in the heart there. Then we go back here. Yeah, then we go back here. We say some prosthetic nerve systems from medulla obligata and then go down, then go to spinal cord. And in the chest region, they go outside of spinal cord. And then the nervous bunch, the nervous bunch, directly go to SA nose. And from SA nose to AV nose. And then some bunch of fibers go to all over blood mass, blood muscles there, cause the contraction. So that's some prosthetic nervous system. And it also working together with the parasympathetic nerves. Parasympathetic nerves, they draw spinal nerves number 10. Spinal nerves, they have totally shell pair. But But number 10, yeah, but number 10. We name it Vega. So these nerve bunch belong to parasympathetic nerve. And they go to ICA nose also. And from the ICA nose go to AV nose. And they reach all over the heart muscle. So basically, these two nerve bands, they're working together. Some prosthetic nerve bands excited. They make heart rate increase. Part some prosthetic nerve bands working. They will decrease heart rate. So by this way, they will balance the heart rate by their needing. So that's basically controlled heart rate by negative feedback system, but directly in the rebound, some prosthetic and pass some prosthetic in the rebound will go to them and control them. So picture here, picture here, or uh, as a nose, located and our AV nose located and some bunches yeah, some bunches go to or uh, basically all over heart muscle here. So that's our heart transmission system. And the heart rate not only controlled by the nervous system, they also control by some chemicals. So the chemicals, some thermal, some thermal. Epinephrine and the norepinephrine. The baseline and the crisis system, we know that coming from adrenal gland medulla part. So basic functions for both of them make heart working stronger, more effective. And also some iron, yeah, some iron in the blood circulation. So that's also working with heart function. So the levels, yeah, the levels, these two areas basically decrease heart rate. 
and the secret hard to practice. And the, the calcium ions increase contraction function and uh, increase the heart rate. So there are upside function in there. Still, balance can control. So that's something affected of heart rate. We also have some other reasons to affect a regular heart rate, like a different aging. A different aging. Uh, children generally say heart beat let it be faster than carries the others. And the gender. Female usually heart beat a little bit faster compared with the male, but it's still depending. And the physical fattening. So, like uh, people do some exercises, they make their heart pretty stronger. So, that kind of patient or that kind of people, the heart rate may be a little bit slow. Because we say output is dependent, like a per minute, the whole, whole beat of the heart, how many millimeters in there, and the time, how much beat in there. Certainly, if four times the beating out more increase, then not necessary to beat into faster. So that's why people always do some physical fitness. That kind of person, heart drop, their heartbeat will be a little bit slow in terms of heart. And also body temperature. When people are getting sick, their body temperature is increased about one degree, 30 degrees. The heartbeat usually increase about 10 feet per minute. Yeah. So that's uh, something effective of a heart rate. And the new baby, the new baby heartbeat usually is over 100 per minute. And the uh, will be gradually, gradually decreased until adults, they go to under 100. And the female we talked about already, slightly high compared with the male. And the exercises make the heart stronger. And so heart rate will be decreased. That's, that's the matter of female or male. So this part still belongs to your anatomy. Yeah. We have some blood vessels to support the heart blood for oxygen. So that's the name is coronary artery. So basically we have two arteries, one on the left side, one on the right side. And we also have two big veins, one on the left side and one on the right side to Receive the blood circulation from the heart. So that's basically our heart part. Now we move into blood vessels. The blood vessels we have five different kind of blood vessels. So this part still belongs to your anatomy. There's some review here. Uh, Bigger blood artery, little bit smaller, and the capillaries, tiny, tiny, small blood vessels, and the veins, small veins, and the bigger veins. So in the capillary air, uh, in the capillary air, 
thus small arteries here, thus small V here. The artery blood coming from the heart is rich oxygen kind of blood. And then we have wind, small wind here. They return the blood, go back to us. And the small, small, tiny, tiny, small blood vessel here, we call it a capillary. capillary. That's our gas or oxygen exchange in the air. So we mainly focus on the capillary exchanging here. So capillary exchanging is the moving, yeah, moving something moving between the blood and uh, like uh, between the cells and the cells some fluid in there. So that's basically some changing. In there. And uh, it waits, yeah, it waits. Still similar like we talked about before, passing the cell's memory. We have diffusion, yeah, diffusion. So that's changing basically, we talked about some high concentrated part to low concentrated part. That kind of movement. And the small, yeah, small material. So that's usually like oxygen, carbon dioxygen, glucose, animal acid, and some hormone, basically by diffusion. We say not naturally use anything. And also some other kind of movement we talked about tricycle. So this kind of movement, so basically we're moving something like a bit bigger and through this way, and we're moving to other side of the cell. I think we have, I didn't put a, I didn't put a picture here. So basically, It's pretty similar like we talked about before, the cells eating. Like by side, they try to make something move inside the cells and then go to other side, it release. So that's basically we talking about this kind of way. So that's by something enter some cells and then moving relieve to other side of the cell. So that way is moving to the transmission. So basically this way mainly for a little bit bigger, yeah, let it be bigger material. And uh, couldn't it be regularly passing through the capillary valve in there? So that's basically like some hormone they pass it. So that's in the capillary eye, the material passing. Then we're talking about something affecting the blood flowing. So blood should be flowing smoothly inside blood vessels. We're talking about from the heart to all over the body, capillaries, and from body capillaries go back to heart. And then from right side of heart go to the lung. And then from the lung go back to left side of heart. 
so that's normally blood flowing. How we can maintain blood flowing? Beside heart, certainly heart is more important. Like a bump, pushing everything go up, pushing the blood go up. Beside the heart, yeah, beside heart. Other thing, blood pressure, pushing blood circulation all over. Blood pressure certainly directly coming from the heart. Heart sending blood, go to blood vessel. Then they have holding some blood pressure there. And another thing is the blood vessels resistance. Blood vessels can hold in the blood inside. It's elastic. The heart like uh, Pushing more blood go in, they go to let it divide that. And then they shrinking back. But it's limited kind of amount in there. They're not totally dilated, too big. Yeah, too big, too late. They couldn't hold in blood pressure there. So we need some resistance in there. And also depending how much amount of blood return back to the blood circulation. Like water flowing. If the other side totally lose it, no much blood return back. Still couldn't maintain it, the normal flowing there. So that's some reasons here. So then we're talking about control. Yeah. Control blood pressure and control blood flowing. What control it? What control it? So control the blood flowing. Still remember we talked about before. Let you feedback system. We say they must be have a receptors, must be have control center, and must be have infection. So that's normally control system. And the control the heart, yeah, control the heart. We say that control center mainly located in the medulla oblongata. We need to remember the location and the name. So basically later on, when you're talking about your points, so some points in the back part of the head or neck, like a 2, 15, 2, 16, or even bladder 10, yeah, your bladder 10. And even like a gallbladder 20. So basically, some points on the back of the neck close to scapular area. So that area is pretty close to all medulla of the gut. And if your needle is too deep or maybe go to wrong direction, you may injure medulla of the gut. And we say that's a cardiovascular control center. There. So if we injure there, it's pretty dangerous. And also a respiratory center, control center, still located in there. 
you can think about the English people couldn't uh, cars couldn't fit there, or people couldn't restriction there. People will be immediately guided, maybe. So more pay attention to the point around that area. But anyway, the picture here just means they have some receptors in the blood vessels, inside blood vessels, basically in our neck area. And they also in the aorta area. They will send the information, go to control center. And then control center send the control information out. Send the control information out. We're still talking about through the sympathetic system. So that's basically sending down, go to the chest area, then they go outside of the spinal cord and through or gambling, and then control sending whole fabric of nervous side, control of our heart. As it knows, it knows there are even some fabric in a muscle here to go to there. And another side, another side, directly coming from our control center. Through the number 10, we're still talking about number 10, final nervous, vagus nervous, directly control the heart. So these two bands, they help each other. Some percentage make everything stronger, heart beating faster, heart contraction faster. Of stronger and the vigorous nervous make it uh, decrease, decrease heart rate and the decrease heart contraction. So that's basically maintenance some balance there. Okay, So that still belong to your anatomy. Blood vessels have artery, have vein, but when we talk about artery, remember, it's carry blood away from the heart. Don't confuse it with oxygen kind of blood or no oxygen kind of blood. We only can say most artery, yeah, most artery is more oxygen kind of blood. But except the pulmonary artery. So thus we are not separate artery with blood level. We say artery is carry blood away from the heart. And the vein is blood, bring blood back to the heart. So that's basically we separate the artery and the vein. So that's still blood circulation in here. Blood circulation in here. Blood circulation is separate two different kinds of circulation. One circulation we call pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary medical work for lung means circulation go to the lung, circulation go to the lung and then go back. And we also have another circulation. So these are still pulmonary circulation here, coming from right ventricle and through the pulmonary tract and go to 
right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. And through the lung, yes, through the lung, get some gas changing, like obstacle in more oxygen and relieve carbon dioxide. And then return back. Return back to the left side of the artery. So right now the blood has more oxygen. But the name, but the name, it's called pulmonary vein. In other words, in pulmonary artery, the low oxygen kind of blood. In pulmonary vein, it's more oxygen kind of blood. It's totally opposite this other artery and the vein. So that's the blood circulation go to the pulmonary circulation. And we also have some other circulation. So basically go to all of the body. I think it's not enough picture. That's from the right side of the heart, the circulation after go to the lung and then return back to left side of the artery. And from left side artery, go to left side ventricle. From left side ventricle, go to aorta. Biggest artery, biggest artery. And from aorta, go to all of the body capillary. And from vocabulary through the wing, from small wing go to bigger wing, then return back to the right side artery. From right side artery, go to right side ventricle. So this part of circulation we call systematic circulation. So that means go to all over the body, blood circulation. So that's the mainly, yeah, mainly or circulated system. Uh, we say we have pulmonary circulation and we also systematically circulation. That's the mainly. Uh, in our circulation system, we also have another special part. Hepatic total circulation. That's a little bit special part by the total wing. So these special circulation, they receive if the blood return back from our digestive system. And then they directly send in to the liver. It is the wind. Yeah, it is the wind. But it's a little bit different with the wind. Usually we say wind directly return back to the heart, right side of the heart. But they form the look like the artery. Like after they go to the liver, they punch it again. So that's still in your anatomy, you should go to detail there. So basic idea there, the absorption nutrition in our digestive system, then sending the nutrition to the liver, and then liver handle it. So that's why we have another special circulation system like they show up from small intestine absorption the nutrition from digestion 
and uh, through that special kind of wind to the liver. And the, in the liver, they monitor what they need, sending to the blood circulation, what they storage in the liver. So we storage a lot of nutrition in the liver. That's why people pretty easily got a fatty liver. Certainly, fatty liver is a safe or unhealthy condition. But originally, meaning they try to store it some energy, like they are not used immediately. But if people eating too much and didn't do exercises, they are not using too much. They got more more fatty. Then they got the fatty. So that's a circulation system. Uh, in circulation system, some book they put the lymph system together, some book they separate. So basically, anatomy connection is lymph system is more close to circulation system. But Functionally, lymph system is separate. It's mainly belong to of our immunity system. They still have vessels, yeah. or tubes, lymph vessels, or tubes, and they still have organs. So organs the lymph system, the biggest one is the spleen. And the stomach and the tonsil. And the certainly everybody has a lot, a lot of lymph nodules all over. So the vessels from smaller one, they still have capillaries. And then we have some vessels here, then they have trap and the duct. And the finally circulation layer they still return back to the heart. So what's the function of the lymphatic system? They have three mainly functions. They circulation, actual body fluid from the tissue. So like uh, help it return back to the blood circulation. So it looks like the blood circulation coming from the artery and then go to tissue, go to capillary. Then they return back. We have two systems here. Why is the V? Why is the lymph? So certainly if we broke it some way, in the lymphatic system here, it's more water retention in the tissue. That sometimes cause for the reason people got edema. And the second function is to transport lipid. We say lipid that coming from our food coming from like we eating. Absorption in the digestive system, but they transport by the lymphatic system. Especially for the fat tissue, look this, and the fatty soluble kind of vitamin, including vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin D, and C. That's uh, fatty soluble vitamin. Certainly, we have some water soluble vitamin. But the fatty soluble vitamin is transported by the liver system. And another important one, we say 
for forming immune TV after. So against some passenger use. So basically, each of the lipid nodules, like a filter system, can filter out some passenger immune and can do some immune to react immune. So that's the mainly function of our lymphatic system. So pictures here can show us how lymphatic systems or lymphatic tubes in the capillary area. So that's the cells and the cells connected here for the lymphatic tube or vessels. But between it, we have a small gap here. So that the liquid can through that gap directly go to lymphatic capillary. So picture here show us the whole lymphatic system. So including some organs and also lymph nodules belong to organs, also including some lymph vessels. Some lymph cells producing in the bone marrow also. So that's why they put the bone marrow. And uh, this picture, yeah, this picture, mainly show us some big leaf vessels, yeah, small leaf vessels, and then they meeting together and form two bigger ones, yeah, two bigger ones. Uh, so like uh, right side and the left side. So basically, you see the bigger. And finally, they return back. Yeah, they return back on the neck area. Go back to the V, and the circulation back to the blood circulation. So, what is circulation inside of a leaf vessels? So, like the picture here, we say. Coming from the heart artery, it's blood circulation, and then go to capillary. And from capillary, part of the blood go back to heart from the V. From the v. Another part through the lymph system, through the lymph nodules, and then go back to the vein first. So basically in the sub vein, the vein and the clavicle bone in that area, it will return back to the vein and then inside the vein go back to heart. So leaf are liquid, the big difference Compare with blood, they don't have blood cell. Basically, no red blood cell, no blood line. But truly, it also have some white blood cell. When like infection happens, they will go to leave a nodule. But normally, they are not go to leave a Mainly, yeah, mainly in the blood circulation is the blood plasma. And certainly, when we talk about blood plasma, including some proteins, including some proteins. So that's basically our circulation system and the liver circulation. That's the your two weeks. Finish cardiovascular system and uh, its function. So, mainly function for the cardiovascular system. 
transport blood and the transport of nutrition, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the maintenance in the external environment. 